Okay, hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with our great Ace Attorney Chronicles. We are going to start the trial of case four. So let's go. I wonder what crazy shenanigans they're gonna throw at us. 20th February. Well, I never expected this. Who'd have thought we'd be back here again so soon? We are on a study tour of Great Britain, with the intention of learning the country's legal practices. In order to research the latest court procedures here, we need as much court experience as possible. Well, yes, I suppose that's true, but... For the person in the dock, it may well be his or her one and only time in court, and it could be life-changing. In which case, treating it as research may seem a little crass. Oh, when you put it like that, you're quite right. Good morning. Oh, him. <clears throat> ah, Mr. Matsume, good morning. Why do- okay, this really bothers me. How come sometimes they refer to him as San and sometimes as Matsume? Like, you're speaking to your fellow countrymen, wouldn't you just use San? I don't understand. Oh dear, are you alright? Your eyes are terribly bloodshot. Oh my gosh! Judge Judy Slayer! <laughs> That's an awesome name! Thank you for the follow! Wait, did the alert sound go off? I didn't hear it. But thank you for the follow. Hope you're doing well. Happy... What's today? Tuesday. The early bird catches the worm, as they say here in Britain. I forgot the voice I gave him. Yes, I've heard that expression. But I really don't want to catch a worm. So I tried desperately not to wake up early, but I was so worried I couldn't catch a wink! And now I'm absolutely exhausted as a result. Do all literary people take things so literally? Ha ha ha, Thank you for putting your faith in us today, Mr. Natsume. Uh-oh. What? I... I wish I had nine lives! My whole future hangs in the balance! I'm... Too terrified to tremble! You're trembling right now. Really? Because I can feel tremors in the floor. I can't do this! I can't take it! Although, locum student Mr. Narahoro Esquire. Um, yes? I caught a glimpse of the public gallery as I walked by the courtroom. It looked like the opening night of the opera. There were so many people. Do people really like going to court and seeing the proceedings? I feel like it's gonna be so boring. I had no idea my case was such a notorious affair here in London. Oh, um, neither did I. Do you know why that might be, Mr. Soto? I'm sorry, Mr. Narugoro, but I have no idea. So that all-knowing look on your face is just coincidence then, is it? Don't hide the truth from me! It's- it's- It's because of the Reaper, isn't it? Lord Van Zeeks? Is, is that right, Mr. Soto? I purchased as many different newspapers as I could find this morning, and yes. Lord Van Zeeks is on the front page of every one. I... I knew it! Sometime after the prosecutor was dubbed the Reaper of the Bailey, he stopped appearing in court, it seems. It's been several years now, in fact, until the day before yesterday. Yes, Inspector Gregson told us something similar, didn't he? The trial two days ago- whoops, that, this is narration. The trial two days ago marked Lord Van Zeke's return to the courtroom after a very long hiatus. The trial of Magnus McGilded. Oh, what a harrowing experience that was. I believe that appearance made even greater waves here in the capital than today's. But we wouldn't have realized, of course, having only just arrived in the country. Why is the Reaper back in the Bailey so soon, for what appears to be a mundane murder? That's the question the papers are asking, and they are all speculating various answers. 
Mundane? Mundane is the most significant saga of the century to some of us! Oh dear, I meant no offense, Mr. Natsume, but that is how the papers are describing it. Well, lest we also forget the fact that it could spark an international incident! Obviously, the reappearance of this infamous prosecutor has caught people's attention. But there's another blatant similarity with the trial of two days ago. Yes, I agree. Locum student, Mr. Naruhoro Esquire! It's you! Me? Well, I suppose that's true. Both times, it is you who stands against this legendary prosecutor. It... it can only mean... That you're friends with the Reaper! <laughs> no, it doesn't. Please, I don't rub shoulders with... with Deathbringers! I'm afraid there's really only one other explanation. It can only be another example, Mr. Naruhoro, of your uncommon bad luck. Thanks for that. Oh, this is just my luck. Why must I be represented by a man with such frail fortune? By the least lucky lawyer alive! <sighs> well, let's not forget that it was you, Mr. Natsume, who asked me to represent you. <laughs> yes, it's true that I'm just a student, new to London, with little in the way of experience or skills, or luck. But I promise you this. I will fight your corner until the bitter end, and I will believe in you, Mr. Natsume. Oh, benevolent locum student, Mr. Naruhoro Esquire. You're not alone here with us, Mr. Natsume. Whatever happens, we will always be on your side. Merry Christmas, everyone! Is it... Is it Christmas? It's August 31st. Also, hey, Monkips, how you doing? Ha Thanks for joining! Happy Tuesday! Or Wednesday for you, probably. But why is it Christmas? <laughs> oh, benevolent non locum assistant, Miss Mikotoba Esquires. <laughs> I am in your debt forever! I shall never forget this great kindness for as long as I live! Mr. Tachime, can you trip for the defense? Why did I give him a western accent? The court session is about to begin. Kindly make your way to the courtroom at once. Never too early to prepare for Christmas? That is true. Dude, it's already almost September. Tomorrow is September, that's crazy. That gives us nine, ten. Like three months to prepare for Christmas. <laughs> All right then, Mr. Natsume, it's time. Let's go. All I want for Christmas is a new PS5. <laughs> yes! Two days until Shang-Chi? Heck yeah. Except I'm not going um, opening weekends because I was too late in buying tickets. So I'm going to go see it um, the weekend after. On September 11th. Ooh. This is it. My second appearance in a British courtroom and my second trial against the Reaper. <gasps> Kazuma! I hope you're watching over me, Kazuma. Because this time, I won't let my faith waver. I'll believe in my client to the last. Just like you believed in me. I believe I can do this now. I'm ready for this fight. Are you gonna watch it opening weekend, Monkips? I, I keep trying not to watch all the little, like, um like featurettes and blurbs that Marvel keeps putting out on YouTube. But, um, ugh. But it's so tempting to watch it. But I don't want to keep seeing, like, new scenes of the movie. I got a PS5, but not many games that take advantage of it besides Returnal. Exactly, so that's why I want to wait to get a PS5 Pro. Or Slim, or whatever next model comes out. Because by then, more PS5 games will have come out. And I think by then, Tales of Arise will have come out. So I want to get that for PS5. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I now call upon the counsels of the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is fully prepared, my lord. Uh, uh, uh. The defense is ready, my lord. I was thinking of waiting a few weeks for Shang-Chi, but sis may want to go Monday since it's holiday in Canada. Oh, nice! Oh yeah, there- Monday is Labor Day. We could have gone to see it then. 
oh well, I got matinee tickets for um, Shang-Chi, so tickets are a lot cheaper, so no regrets. I'll just have to um, stay away from spoilers. The Nipponese are a truly fascinating breed. Sorry, what? Lord Strongheart has told me all about you. That you are a student who arrived in London but two days ago. A mere amateur. Oh, oh, oh. Do, do you have a point? I'll spoil it, don't worry, everyone dies. <laughs> no, Mudkips, how dare you! <laughs> Being a compatriot, you, a compatriot, you feel compelled to try to help the accused, I suppose. Typical Nipponese arrogance. Why is that arrogance? Isn't that camaraderie? Wow, what a jerk. Forgive me, but I do not believe arrogance is an appropriate description. Susato-san. See, now he calls her Susato-san, like, what the heck? After all, at our previous encounter, the defendant was found to be innocent. Very true. And the most fascinating, if dark, trial it was too. Oh, oh, oh. The tragic conclusion came after, of course. Here's to the acquitted and his unfortunate, violent end. Oh, oh, oh. Gotta go Lurk Mode playing Neo World ends with you. Oh, that came out? I didn't know. Have fun with that. Thank you, Councils. I see both sides are in fine fettle. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, are you ready to carry out your duties here in court as impartial members of the public? Whoa, wait, it's him again? Never know when you might be down on your luck, but I believe in fair play for everyone. Well, I must warn you, I'm rather ruthless that I appear. More ruthless than I appear. Hey, he cleaned up! Wait a minute, did they- what? Huh. Isn't this the old Hatter guy? Not the old, but in the previous trial. Oh, well, not me. What you see is what you get. I'm a peace-loving fellow. Oh my word, why is she on the jury? I'm afraid to say, I think it's quite possible that moustached foreigner did the deed. Come on, what are we waiting for? No doubt he did it anyway. Yeah, sorry, didn't quite catch that. <laughs> Very well, let us proceed. Your opening statement, if you please, Lord Van Zix. Very recently, Great Britain signed an alliance with the rising power in the Far East. The accused in the dock today is a student from that same land, a certain Mr. Soseki Natsume. And while that country has extended this foreign student the warmest of welcomes, regrettably, the kindness has not been returned. In fact, this student is accused of the most sinister acts. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. <laughs> of plunging a knife into the back of an innocent woman who is doing nothing but walking down the street. Knife crime? I tell you from bitter experience, those are the worst. Bloody oath they are. Yeah, this is the banker. This is, um, what's his face? This is the banker. This is, I have no idea, she's new. Just look at that sunny complexion and short stature. He's, he's one of those dreadful Japanese. That is so racist. Come on, let's get this over with. With me now, everyone. One, two, three. Eh, uh, sorry. Didn't quite catch that. <laughs> Maybe I should make his voice more like breathy, like <gasps> Joy. Pray, forgive the discourtesy of smashing my hallowed chalice here in this great chamber. You're not sorry. Allow me to call the first witness to the stand. Very well. Bailiff, lead the inspector in, please. The inspector is the witness. Oh, I guess he has to testify. Your name and occupation, please. I forgot what voice I gave him. Yes, sir. Tobias Gregson, Detective Inspector at Scotland Yard. 
Would you please summarize the events of the case for the court inspector? The victim is thought to be a young woman in her 20s by the name of Olive Green. <laughs> Olive Green! <sighs> okay, so now can I examine her in the court record? Uh, people. Yes, Olive Green, victim of this case, was found with a knife in her back. Luckily, the wound didn't prove fatal, but the woman remains unconscious in her hospital bed. Okay. I beg your pardon, Inspector. Thought to be. Yes, having been stabbed in the back by an attacker's knife, the victim fell unconscious. That was three days ago now, and she's been comatose ever since. What? So they don't even know who she is for sure? Hmm, comatose, I see. But her life is not in danger. Fortunately for the Eastern student, the charge will not be murder. Pray, elaborate on the details, Inspector. So, if I could ask everyone to look at the street map. Oh man, him and the judge sound too similar, but I can't make my voice any deeper. As I mentioned, the incident took place three days ago, at five in the afternoon. It happened on the per pavement, running alongside Bry Road, a wide thoroughfare for horse-drawn vehicles. Okay, so the book store was on Mearsham. It not long stops going as the victim, Miss Green, was walking down the street. Out of the blue, she was approached from behind by the accused and stabbed in the back. Luckily, the young lady's life was spared and she currently being treated in one of the city's hospitals. But being unconscious as he is, we've been unable to take a statement from her, of course. This is the case file with everything we know about the victim so far. Thank you, Inspector. The court will accept the documents as evidence if you please. Okay, so now I'm gonna look at the court record. Uh, I don't care about what you said, okay. File exo, details of the victim. She is found with a knife in the back, currently in the hospital. Young woman rendered unconscious following a stab wound to the back. Olive green, female stout build, early 20s. Uh, reporting officer Roly B. Just a B cop. Additional notes, the victim remains unconscious. Her name was gleaned from her personal effects. Other details are unknown. Apart from the single stab wound from the large knife, no other signs of injury were observed. The assailant was seen running away by the reporting officer and was successfully arrested the following day. Okay. Okay. What the weapon that was used? So, I have that here. It was removed from the victim's back. Ouch, that big thing is starting to make me scared to walk down the street now. With a heavy blade like that, almost anybody would have been able to stab the poor woman. Isn't it just a pocket knife? Even this scragged looking soseki on, I suppose. From worst to best, ketchup, mustard, mayo, go. Um, mustard, ketchup, mayo, gun. Also, hey Alex, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. I hate mustard. It's so, um... I don't know how to describe the taste, but ugh. And then ketchup is weird. It's too sweet. And mayo. Wrong answer, I hate mayo. Well, I hate mustard. <laughs> hmm, a common old garden jackknife, I would say. Rather nondescript. Ketchup, ketchup, ketchup. <laughs> I don't like ketchup either. I don't like extra sauce on my food. Like even barbecue sauce or like like buttery sauces, I don't like that. The only sauce I like is soy sauce when you have to dip sushi into it. But other than that, I don't like sauces. Never taking you to Subway. Dude, I, I, Subway is the worst. It is literal not food. Cause the bread is so, it's like papery. And then they barely give you any meat. And then they, they just shove a whole bunch of lettuce on top. And it's like, they don't proportion stuff out nicely. And in the end, it's just like a soggy bread and lettuce sandwich. And I'm just like, ugh. You love Subway, just had it yesterday. I'm sorry, I can't do Subway. Ooh. Thank you, Inspector. The court accepts the blade as evidence. The blade has been a large but commonplace folding knife. It was found washing the victim's back. 
Okay, now I'm going to look at, examine the knife. Oh, the tip is gone. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh, look here, Mr. Nadahodo. Just at the tip. A small piece of the blade appears to be missing. You're right. Well spotted, Mrs. Nadahodo. I wonder what could have happened to it. Yes. You... you don't think... It could still be lodged in the victim, do you? Oh dear, I do hope not. That sounds terribly painful. I prefer pita pit. Any place with pineapple as a topping? I have never heard of pita pit. Okay, I think that's all I could examine about this knife. The tip is missing. Okay. Now then, what do we know of the motives? Money or valuables, I presume? From what we can tell by looking at the woman's possessions, it seems like she's a poor student herself. Hard to imagine she would have had anything much worth pinching, my lord. I see. Well, in that case, are we looking at some deep-seated resentment toward the victim? I'm afraid I couldn't say. Apart from visiting second-hand bookshops, the defendant, Mr. Natsume, did, doesn't appear to get out much. At this moment in time, we haven't been able to establish any sort of connection between him and the victim. Hi! Why did I raise my hand? If theft and grievance had been ruled out as a motive, what reason could Mr. Natsume possibly have had for stabbing the young woman? Yet you arrested the man in spite of that, in a totally unjustified and heavy-handed way. Pray forgive the discourtesy of flinging a freshly uncorked bottle into the public gallery. But your words have sourced its hollowed bouquet. What? Pita Pit is a Canadian thing, like ketchup chips? I'm sorry, what? Ketchup chips? Oh well. For it is you, my learned friend, who is being heavy-handed here. Blame Canada. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know what is delicious, though? Poutine. I was so full from eating. I got one carton and it was like literally the size of my hands. I could only eat this much, like not even half, but it was so good. And I wish I could have finished it all, but I couldn't. Scotland Yard does not arrest people without good cause. That should be beyond question. Ketchup chips are fantastic. Teresa made a ketchup flavor because it's so good. I guess if you like ketchup, it'll be good, but I don't like ketchup. Inspector Gregson, the prosecution calls for your formal testimony. Explain to the court precisely why the constabulary came to arrest a Nipponi student. Yes, sir. I really want to go back to Canada. Uh, specifically, I want to go to Prince Edward Island because I love Anne of Green Gables. But I've been to Quebec, I've been to Toronto, and they were nice. As I said, it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon when the incident occurred, and there was an unusually light fog. Visibility was reasonably good, and there was no one else well but the victim and the accused. Out of the blue, the victim was stabbed from behind and subsequently collapsed on the pavement. The accused ran off, scattering his belongings all over the floor. There was being a number of old books he just bought. He was on his way home from the bookshop, it seems. Oh my gosh, so many statements! It was just a matter of working out who the books belonged to, and we found a bloke to arrest them. I've been to Niagara Falls and that's it. I've been to Niagara Falls when I was little. I heard that um, the size of the waterfall actually like got smaller. So it's not as like, there isn't as much water as there used to be. That's kind of sad. Poutine is fantastic, if it's real poutine. I hope I had real poutine. What I had was good. I really wanted to keep eating. Blame erosion. Mm. Old books, you say? 
Yes, my lord. I have a photograph here of the scene of the crime taken immediately after the incident. Oh, yes, I can clearly see the box to which you are referring. I will take that photograph of print as evidence, please, Inspector. Okay, I'm gonna examine this more. Okay. So, she fell on her side, but she was stabbed on her back? And the books are all scattered about. There's the knife wound. I don't think there's anything else of note to see here. Okay. You Nipponese are a spineless breed, too cowardly to admit defeat. Denying everything as despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Well, I... Forgive me, Lord Fancyx, but the defendant is not denying everything as you put it. What are you doing, Mrs. Sato? Do go on. Mr. Natsuma has admitted to playing some part in the incident. Isn't that right, Mr. Naruhodo? Well, now you mention it. When we visited him in the prison yesterday, he did tell us what had all happened. It's almost one thing alone got a cursed pay for that could make it the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman wearing a green overcoat she was, and just as I went to overtake her, she suddenly let out a little scream and collapsed into the cold, hard slabs of stone at my feet. I was terrified. I had to get away from there. So I ran as fast as my legs carried me back to my cursed lodgings. Did he just say Natsume? Is this Ango Natsume's great grandfather we never saw? Ango Natsume. Why does that name sound familiar? Where is that name from? Hmm. A green overcoat. Ango Natsume strikers. Is, is he from- is he the second case, dude? I don't remember the name of the second case. I just remember the name of the first girl was Alice. Ah, uh, maybe- haha, <laughs> maybe they are related. Well, that's exactly what the woman in that print is wearing. Oh my, a photographic print in full color. What will the world come up with next? The defendant has done nothing more than admit he fled the scene of a terrifying incident. That does not mean that he's guilty of the heinous crime of stabbing the woman in the back. There was nobody else there at the time, just the two of them, the victim and the accused. In other words, there is nobody else who could possibly have stabbed the woman. A fact that the accused concedes. Uh. Hmm, it seems this cross-examination could prove to be pivotal, counsel. Proceed, please. Yes, my lord. Nothing for it. I have to use this cross-examination to turn the tables here. It's our only chance. As per usual, I will be pressing every single statement, no matter how mundane. But do but do bo bo um press. A light fog, you say? Well, light for London. You can see the opposite side of the street for once. Not much further though. That's light, is it? Around these parts, yes. Not something I'd expect a Japanese fellow like yourself to know, of course. I've read that London is famous for its fog. But in my country, people usually imagine that gives the city a rather beautiful appearance. Psst, how quaint. Yes, well, it's not something us Londoners tend to romanticize, as I expect you can appreciate. Hey Kirby, how you doing? Thanks for joining, happy Tuesday! 
Statement one, where were you on the night of the 14th? <laughs> I don't remember, where was I the night of the 14th? <laughs> I see. At this time of year, the fog causes a large number of accidents, especially when it's heavy. Heavy rain! Sometimes you can't even see your own hand at the end of your arm. Indeed, the other day I was very nearly trampled by horses before I could see the carriage they were pulling. Ugh, this is the sign that I should be definitely remembered to stop, look, and listen. However, on the day that concerns us, the fog was somewhat lighter than usual. A fact, no doubt, lamented by the accused. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This building was in the good. But there was a police officer there who saw everything. How are you able to state that with any certainty? Quite simply, my learned friend. Because that is what the witnesses to this crime have told us. Then there were other people other than this. Okay, whatever. Ah, yes, Inspector Gregson mentioned the witnesses yesterday, didn't he? That's right. One of them is a policeman, I believe, from Scotland Yard. That is correct, Mom. <laughs> then we must hear their testimony. The prosecution will, of course, call them to the stand, should it be necessary. It's necessary. But wait a minute. At five o'clock in the afternoon, in the middle of winter, it would have been dark already. No matter how light the fog may have been, no one could have seen. I'm unaware of the situation on your tiny island in the east. But here in the capital city of Great Britain, all main roads are illuminated in the night by gas streetlights. Ah. The prosecution believes there would have been ample light by which the witness to witness the crime. Quite. Here in London, for the first time in history, mankind has completely conquered the darkness. Which means we really need to hear those witness statements. If I could just get through the fog of this cross-examination, maybe we'll be able to. It seems the counsel for the defense is taking stock. Continue with your testimony, Inspector. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, blue, blah, 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 blah. What the? From behind, you say? That's right, as you can see from the sprint. Yes, quite so, Inspector. The handle of the weapon is clearly protruding from the victim's back. And you say this poor woman, Miss Green, remains in critical condition, comatose no less. I'm afraid so, my lord, yes. She's been treated at bots. I was hopeful that she'd come round before the trial started so I could take a statement, but it wasn't to be. Yes, that's indeed a pity. It would have been most illuminating to hear the victim's own accounts of the events. Luck is on your client's side, it seems. Why? On the contrary, my client has been exceedingly unlucky. Your force of thought is seriously undermined by those disturbingly wide eyes, I'm afraid. Uh. Accused right now, it's gonna roll up, blah, blah. <sighs> Mr. Nuts and Miss Belongings. Um. I think you'll find it's all in there in the photograph of print of the crime scene. Yes, the three books on the floor. That's right, my lord. Second hand books they were. Irrepar irreparably, irreparably damaged after falling in the snow, of course. The accused could easily have carried all three books in one hand. Which means. His other hand would have been free to wield a knife, for example. 
He's very clever, isn't he? What do you mean? He's made it extremely hard for you to assert that Mr. Natsume had had his hands full with his books. He's managed to close one avenue of escape we might have had before we even knew it was there. You mean to say that the defendant was holding his belongings as he thrust a knife into the woman's back? That must be what happened, my lord, yes. The defendant apparently visits a second-hand bookshop on a daily basis. Yes, so I understand. A shop full of old English literature. I commend the accused on the lofty subject matter of his scholarly attention. The bloke's room was stuck, floor sealed with those musty old books. Can you tell us more about the bookshop in question, please, Inspector? Well, if I must. I'll have to ask you to look at the street map again, I'm afraid. Okay, Bourbon Books is there. The closest second hand bookshop to the accused lodgings is this place here, Bourbon Books. A little place on the corner of Broad Road and Beersham Street. As it happens, the accused is currently living in lodgings on the other side of Broad Road at the opposite end. Which means it doesn't take a genius to work out the route he would have taken home. Something like this. Okay, thank you for updating that. I don't think I have to examine it because it's just showing the bookshop location. Yes, I concur with your con conclusion, Inspector. The defendant would certainly have passed the scene of the crime on his way home from that particular shop. Mr. Naruhono, I think that what the inspector just told us could turn out to be of vital importance. Okay, never mind. I'm going to examine it now. Um, <laughs> examine. Why is this vital? It would have come out this way. This way. I'm guessing the bike, the dent, uh, the bike with the dented wheel we saw in front of the lodging house is going to come into play. Okay. Oh, I didn't read. Did I read this? Um, your books. It's the wrong. It's not Bourbon Books. It's a different bookstore that he went to. Mr. Natsume. Some of two shillings tended to receipt of the picture of Monsieur Le Le Lecoq. Awesome name. A meal for Gaborio and Canterbury Yearnings. Bourbon Books. It's the wrong bookstore. Woo! It wasn't him. Thank you, Susato. Good thing I looked at it then. Yes, I agree. The most important point that the inspector just made being the bookshop's name. Inspector Gregson, may I ask you for a favor? What? Would you kindly add the name of the bookshop to your formal testimony, please? I believe it may be of vital importance. Maybe. Oh, well, you know, I mean, yes! It could be a very important clue. Very well. Not that I can see it being of any great significance. But please advise your testimony accordingly, Inspector. Yes, sir, my lord. Whatever you say. Could the man be any more sardonic? <laughs> Hey, guess what, guys? Meow. Um, if I could just stop you there, Inspector Gretzen. What is it, Sunshine? I'm a busy man, you know. This is a receipt that we found in Mr. Natsume's room. It was issued on the day of the incident and details the purchase of three secondhand books. And you found that in the accused's room, did you? Yes, but the point is not where the receipt was found, but the name of the shop printed on it. Go on. 
This receipt was issued from a bookshop called Your Books. <laughs> Your Books? Y-O-R-E, I presume? Yes, my lord. So Mr. Natsume did indeed purchase a number of books at a second-hand bookshop that day. However, the bookshop in question was not bourbon books. Eh? What? Inspector, do you know if this other bookshop? Uh, yes, sir. Your books is another second-hand bookshop not far from bourbon books. It's just that... Well, it's such a small place, I, I didn't think the Qs would have known about it. But in fact, that is the bookshop which the defendant visited on the day in question. And this receipt proves it. Yes, for what difference it makes. Whatever the man purchased his musty tomes, it makes no difference in the final analysis. I disagree. I mean, after all, um... I have the street map here, if that might be of help. Oh, yeah, yes, thank you. Have a look at this, please. If the defendant had been returning from Bourbon Books... Then yes, he would have almost certainly passed the place where Miss Green was attacked. However, if we take into account the fact that he was actually at another bookshop, your books, it may very well turn out that he wouldn't have passed that location at all. Could that be true? My, my, it rather depends on whether this other bookshop is, but I do declare it may be a possibility. Is that right, Mr. Lawyer, sir? What you just said? That is definitely Mr. Hatter, dude! Absolutely, it could absolutely be. It absolutely could be right. <laughs> Guess what? Your books is right next to Bourbon! <laughs> Inspector Gregson, where is your books establishment? Where is this your books establishment? Well, um, obviously we looked into that. It turns out that your books. It's just here on the next corner of Mission Street, going east. So he could have gone either way, and that's a big deal. He may not have gone down um, Briar Street. And there you have it, as you can clearly see now. Oh. Don't give over to Nosuke. My learned Nipponese friend is obviously in training to be a clown, the way he regales us with such witticisms. To your future career in the circus. <gasps> you put that glass down now, or I'll put it down for you. I, um, didn't think I needed to spell it out, but here we go. If the accused was coming home from your box instead of bourbon box. There's no doubt he would still have passed the place where the victim was stabbed. Unless he went around Calabash! Yes, thank you, Inspector. Uh. Allow me to reiterate for my learned if somewhat slow, Nipponese friend. Wherever the man purchased his musty toes, it makes no difference in the final analysis. It does! He could have gone around the other way! Hello! Why is no one making this... As I suspected, you can't fool me, and I don't suggest you try. Well, I say, I've had enough of this now. Beg your pardon? Terribly sorry, but would you mind repeating that? Mr. Naruhodo. Mustn't give up. Well, what do you mean? If the prosecution's assertion is correct, the members of the jury may very well decide that Mr. Natsume is guilty. 
Oh, I want some milk tea right now. Holy crap. Ah, she's absolutely right. You must think. You must consider the assertion just put forward by the prosecution very, very carefully. They claim Sosaki-san must have passed the location of the incident on his way home from your books, but... There... He could have gone the other way! <laughs> the assertion just made by the prosecution is fundamentally flawed. Explain yourself, counsel. Um, yes, my lord. You, you can see what I mean on this map. Why returning from your books to his lodgings? Mr. Masume could have followed the route suggested by the prosecution. However, that isn't the only conceivable route to take between the two places. Thank you. If the defendant used these streets, look what happens. He arrives back at his lodgings without passing the location where the victim was attacked. Talking back to a clown is a fool's errand, of course. However, I feel compelled to point out that... That route is what is commonly referred to as the long way round. Ah... Uh, so? On a cold winter's night, why would any man choose to take a longer route home? For more fresh air, dummy. Well, um, um... The answer is extremely simple. He wouldn't, in other words. The accused took the obvious route back to his lodgings and is obvious perpetrator of this crime. But... But, but? Ha, ah, yes, I've got it. Obviously, we must ask the man himself. Ask Mr. Natsume which route he took home. I have already informed the court of the accused's response to such questioning. He claims he has no recollection. Ah. That's why, right. as I said, the bloke seems to spend his time outside wandering aimlessly from A to B. That's was no exception. He says he doesn't remember where he was or which route he took home. I don't... I don't believe this! You stop that, Fancies. I thank you, my learned friend. And suggest that we do not waste any more of the court's time by wandering aimlessly around the subject. What say you insightful durers? So dramatic, for real. Hey! Hey, Bells! How you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Tuesday! <laughs> you Nipponese. Oh, whoa, I missed it. <laughs> Are they all doing it now? No! I agree with Lord Van Zeeks. Wholeheartedly and in every way. What? I don't believe it. Does... Does this mean... No way it can't end here. We members of the jury are completely convinced now. Very well, in that case, I hereby call upon all members of the jury to present your findings to the court. No! Why do you all have voices now? Is this for real? It would appear the jury's leaning is unanimous. For real. To the insightful members of the jury, I applaud your brave resolve. You serve queen and country admirably. Ah, ah, ah. Mr. Nadahoro. No, not yet. This isn't over yet. I still have one last chance to sway the opinion of the jury. I 
have to tip the balance of those scales the other way. I have to turn this around. Somehow. Hmm, those are the eyes of a quarry not yet willing to give up and die. Happy Tuesday! I've never played Ace Attorney, but I've seen memes, so it's fun to see it played out. Ace Attorney is a really fun series. I mean, sometimes it could get annoying because you're just like, common sense, this to this to this. But the game makes you like play out a certain way because they're like, oh, this has to trigger this, has to trigger this. So even though you want to go down a straight line, they make you go like, and then reach like the next point. And I'm just like, ah. So I presume you intend to wield your rights again in this trial. Rights of the defense written into the antiquated British law that should have been buried long ago. Jelly looked like she wanted to joke someone. I I did. Particularly fancies. Call it antiquated if you will. But it's the defense's prerogative to carry out a summation examination if it so chooses. Yellow, hey Smith, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. Very well, Council. In accordance with the letter of the law, we shall proceed with the summation examination. Are the members of the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? Of course we're ready. I'm all too familiar with what Nibonese whipsnapper and his onkus... Onkus? Onkus? Refusal to throw his alley. See, they... They said they picked impartial members of the jury, but I clearly went up against two of those guys in the last trial, so they're obviously, like, biased against me. And then there's that one lady who lives across the street from where the stabbing took place, so she's obviously biased, and it's just like, this is not impartial. You will each explain on what grounds you have determined the defendant to be guilty. So what you're saying is, the jury's still out on this one. <laughs> How you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. Man, you always bring it with the puns. Thank you. For pity's sake, that little Lebanese oddity has already admitted himself, didn't he? If he said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why he could only have been the victim. The man would have gone round houses on his way back from bookshop, not in winter. Said a poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful. I really don't care. Can't we just wrap this up now? I've got work to be doing. Mm -mm, your box, yes. I shot that. A bourbon box. Mm, no, not worth a visit. <laughs> Cute cat emote. Hmm. With only minor exceptions, the reason for finding the defendant guilty are all too clear. When the stabbing occurred, the only two people at the scene were the victim and the accused. And the accused himself has admitted to seeing the victim in her green overcoat sink to the ground beneath, before his eyes. Furthermore, we have heard from the inspector that the defendant then fled the scene. I must say, I would have ample grounds to convict this man already. Is that the maid who beat her husband? Yes, it is. Oh dear, even the judge appears convinced of Mr. Natsume's guilt now. Ugh, why did he have to run away like that? And how are we supposed to believe in some phantom attacker that nobody could see? This is impossible. How could they possibly make a case for the defense? How come we're not asking where the, the policeman was stationed? Because depending on if the policeman was on the corner of um, of of that one and Briar, then that means Natsume was coming from the north. But if the policeman was like either next to or north, then that means Natsume was coming from the south. And gosh, a likely story. Mr. Naruhoto, this is no time for grumbling. If we want to force a trial to continue... Yes, I know. I have to turn the tide. I must make the jurors change their minds. Well, four of them at least. Exactly. We have no choice but to forge forward. 
You have the floor, Council. Begin your submission examination. Now this one's a little bit unclear because last time I had like clear idea of like, hey, blah, 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 blah. But this time it's just nothing. I just need to keep the trial going somehow, whatever it takes. Come on, Ryunosuke, you can do it. Jury examination. The defense's rebuttal. It's that little Lake Rizari admitted himself, didn't he? Um... Can I press these? He said that woman in greed collapsed before his eyes, but I could only have been the victim. Something wrong with that. The man who wouldn't have gone around houses, not in winter. So the poor woman was attacked from behind. Was she? How dreadful. I really don't care. Can I just wrap this up now? I've got work to be doing. Like, these two guys don't seem to care. Not worth a visit. Oh, press. Hmm? Sorry? Food, did you say? Food what? Um, no, no. What I said was, hold it. What I wanted to ask was, do you visit your books often? I like the old books they have in there, yes. I enjoy reading them over a nice cup of old tea. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. And at what time did you visit your books on the day in question? Well, I was picking out books in there all afternoon, and it would have been just before five that I left. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. Just before five, you say. Exactly when the victim was attacked. Are you sure about the time? Oh yes, no mistake there, I remember it well. I'm not about to forget that day in a hurry, not after the dreadful time I had. What do you mean? Well, I was walking to Carabas Road when I slipped on ice and dumped my head. It was always worse after snow stopped falling, that's when it's most slippery. Knocked myself clean out, I did. I really thought my number was up. He has a green coat! Wait a minute, let me get this straight. This happened on Calabash Road. That's right, I live in Cornpipe, you see? Wait a minute, we're, map, map. Um, it happened on Calabash Road. And, and he was wearing a green coat and he fell and slipped on the ice. But then this woman fell and she was wearing a green coat, but she's on Briar. So, oh, this is a totally separate thing then. Maybe, maybe Natsume saw the old man fall and he ran away. If you, if they check the title of the books, then wouldn't that prove which books it is? Cause there's three books here, but it's not, it may not be the books that Natsume picked up. Hmm. Heading down Calabash Road is the quickest way for me to get back from your box. Juror number six, I must insist that you add that information to your formal statement. It may very well be extremely significant. Hmm, sorry? Extremely sick? No, no, I'm quite alright now. Okay, so... I should press everyone. It sends a shiver down my spine to hear the members of the jury so convicted, co so convinced of Mr. Natsume's guilt. But I can't help feeling that some of their opinions are rather subjective. I agree. It's the irrelevance of what some of them are saying that sends a shiver down my spine. Still, at least some of their assertions don't actually incriminate Mr. Natsume of anything. That's something. You must use that to our advantage, Mr. Naruhodo, cunningly. Yes, you're right. Let's listen to the jurors again, carefully. And if any of their assertions are at odds, I'll pit them mercilessly against each other. Yes, don't hold back. Pit them all against each other. Well, I can't pit them against each other wrongfully. Okay, so I'll just press everyone. Um, excuse me, but... 
Aren't you? Yes, that's right. I was in the witness stand myself just two days ago. Yes, I had a feeling I knew your face. Or the side of it, anyway. I'll just press everyone. Pushy toes. <laughs> I need more information from them, Kirby. If I remember correctly, you're a banker, aren't you? That's right. After the gold rush down under, I came back to London to work. And it was all going swimmingly until you started fossicking around. Bruce Fairplay was a man of repeat. Sorry? Don't think I've forgotten how you treated me the other day. You had me and that young had a pegged as criminals. Oh, well, you know, water under the bridge. Now there's all sorts of rumors buzzing around, and the police have been battering me non-stop. If, if I could turn back the clock... Well, anyway, I don't know about the hatter, but at least I'm in the clear now. I'm free to make up my own mind, but who's guilty and who isn't? <sighs> thank goodness. Alright, maybe I might struggle to change this man's mind, given our awkward history. Oh dear, I wonder what's become of Mr. First now. If it's the Hatter, he's right here, he's juror number three! If you say that woman in green crap, she's blah, 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 blah. <sighs> You're right at that... Uh, you're right that at the time of the incident, the defendant admits to having seen someone wearing a green overcoat walking ahead of him. Well, quite. That's precisely my point. Clearly that someone wearing green was the victim. And clearly that funny little Nipponese man with the disturbing moustache is the culprit. She's so racist. But let us not forget, madam, the defendant vehemently denies attacking the woman. He does. If he, admits to, if he admits to stabbing her, his life is over. The man is obviously a liver faced coward. Honestly, can the woman simply collapse before his eyes? But if that's a lie as you're suggesting, do you not think he would have concocted something more credible? No, I really couldn't say. After all, you are foreign. Who's to say what goes to your funny little minds? So freaking racist! I could tell you what's going through my funny little mind right now, but you wouldn't like it. <laughs> this, this woman is ridiculous. I do declare the man has already made the admission. He himself has stated that there was nobody else around. Surely the conclusion is obvious. No one else could possibly have committed this awful crime. Ugh. Watch it be a freaking fellow Londoner, and let's see what your prejudices have to say about that. If no one else could have done it, the accused must be the man. Really, could it be more simple? Your argument is compelling in its simplicity, I must admit. Oh my, you are too kind, my lord. That went well for her. I think I pit her against the old man, but I want to press everyone else before I make my final decision. But you can't deny that there are other routes Mr. Natsuma could have taken back from your books. Oh yes, like you drew on the map, you mean. What was it? Galabash Road or something? Precisely. But it seems to me that what counts as whether the little Japanese fellow will actually went that way or not. Well, yes, that's true. And at the moment, there's no proof that shows he did, is there? Well, yes, that's true as well. And as I understand it, the accused himself doesn't remember which way he went, does he? Well, yes, that's annoyingly true. Wait, and that's a dark and cold, so the way I see it, you'd want to get home as quickly as possible. Well, yes. Why is all this true? So really, the only thing that makes sense is that he went home along Briar Road. Ah, I'm supposed to be convincing you here. I've given it a lot of thought, you know. I didn't just make up my mind on a whim that you did. I mean, if there was some logical reason why he might have gone down Calamus Road, then it'd be different. I 
be happy to reconsider my position in that case. Honest, I would. Hmm, a reason why Sosakizan might have taken the long way home. Yes, a good reason. I don't imagine you'll be able to sway this young man's opinion without one. So if I put pit juror number two to juror number six, we'll get something. But two more witnesses to press. <laughs> Matter, young man. You remember the wife of Mr. Garadev, aren't you? The landlord who rents Mr. Natsuma his room? Master's wife? Where do you get your ideas, sir? I'm the maid. The maid, you understand? She's keeping up that charade? Ugh, this is going to be awkward. Um, why didn't you mention this yesterday? That you'd been selected for the jury in this trial, I mean. Well, I was told not to mention it to anyone until the day of the trial, you see. It was in the letter I received. The instructions were very clear, so I'm afraid I had no choice. I see. Anyway, Mr. Natsume, the defendant, takes lodging in your master's house, doesn't he? Yes, that's right. Although he's only been a little over a week now. And in that time, surely you must have taken stock of his character. Does Mr. Natsume look like the kind of man who would commit a crime such as this? Oh my goodness me, yes! He's just the sort! What? Spending all his time in that dark and dingy room, sporting that unscrupulous moustache. The man never speaks and doesn't do get me starting on those shifty eyes. All the neighbors are talking about him. I've heard them, you know. People think he must be building a bomb in there or something. Oh dear, poor Mr. Natsume. How could people say such things about him? He's just a harmless bookworm. Nothing more. Well, he just called him a worm, so... Juror number four looks familiar. For some reason, I like her smack cheek animation a lot. Probably because it has, like, the jiggle on the other side. So, so it's just like, ooh, like actual physics. It's nice. Anyway, I'd better be careful about inviting this maid to speak. She said enough damning things already. Jiggly toes. No, I'm trying to lose weight. <laughs> Jiggly puff. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. I meant to press him. Press, 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 stop, stop, press. A man's life is on the line here, sir. This will take as long as it takes. Don't get clever with me now, son! My life's on the line too, and so is my family's. Ah. Likes of you will understand, but labor like me can't afford to take time off. If I don't work, I will eat, and I do the wife and kids. Oh, I see. That must be very hard. She did think her bubby was cheating on her with his name was not even the love letter. Yeah, she she jumps to conclusions a lot, so I can't say she's a really good judge of character. <sighs> that was very hard. That's what she said. Ha <laughs> ha! But I'm. <laughs> I go to the union every morning to find out what needs doing. If you're late and work's taken, it's tough. This time of year, there's water and gas supply pipes bursting left, right, and center. They're after cheap labor to get the roads dug up to fix. It's a hard slog from dawn to dusk, it is. So, you were out digging up the roadside on the day of the incident as well, were you? That's right. In fact, if I remember rightly, it was just round the corner from where it all happened. By the little bookshop it was. What? Another coincidence? That's right, Mirsham Street it was. So if he was digging up the road, then of course that would force him to go down um Calabash. Mirsham Street. On the map, Mr. Natola, there are only three named streets. Juror number five, I need you to add that information to your formal statement, please. What's the point in that? Can't we just get those business over with now? Please, sir, it's important. 
fine, I'll do it then. On the day it happened, I was thinking up Mearsham Street from dawn till dusk, and I slipped over that evening myself on Calabash Road. I knocked myself clean out, you know. Okay, so, chair number five, ready for fisticuffs. No! I'll fight him. Okay, um... I'll pit these two. Those two statements are clearly at odds with one another. At odds, Council, explain yourself. Please, don't point! It wasn't me, I swear! But what? I, I just wanted this done and dusted! I like his pose, like, her, I'm a macho man. <laughs> well, turn number three? Oh, me, sir? W what do you mean? Juror number five's words just now are extremely significant. Macho toast. <laughs> Soon you'll see, you'll see bulging muscles from my arm, <laughs> but not yet. Let's take a moment to consider the implications of what's been said on the map of our local area. Whoops. I didn't do Ring Fit today. Oh my gosh, I've been doing Ring Fit every day for like seven days now. And I overkilled it on Sunday, so my like, my muscles are still sore. I'm dying. Everything hurts. And I started doing planks on there. Oh my gosh, it's so tough. Ugh. On the day in question, Mr. Natsume visited this bookshop to purchase a number of secondhand books. And on the same day... Oh my gosh, it's so tough. That's what she said! <laughs> we know that there were works being carried out on Mirsham Street, making it impassable. Which means that the defendant's route home... Could not have taken him along Mirsham Street and down Briar Road. Oh, yes, of course! What do you think, sir? Well, yes, you can't argue with that, really, can you? We must have had a good two yards or more of the pavement, uh, dug up. Every gentleman and gentlewoman that came along had to turn back and go the other way. So the only conclusion is this. The defendant must have taken the longer route back to his lodgings. Yes, I suppose he must have. I, I suppose that must be right, eh? Juror number three, you said the following. The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop. But we see now that he had no choice. Yes! Well, Mr. Judge, sir, if I may. Yes? I... I don't think in all good conscience that I can say the man's guilty now. Yes, I'd like to see this trial continue so we can get to the bottom of what really happened. Thank you. But watch him flip his vote later on in the trial and... Ugh. What about you, sir? Uh, who, me? Hmm, well, all right then. There's a hole in the prosecution's argument. It should be filled in, that's what I say. Hydrate! Oh my gosh, Kirby! <laughs> Hydration done! Oh, well done, Mr. Nadahoda. That was wonderful! Well, we've managed to change a couple of minds at least. It strengthened our position somewhat. Yes, and it will prompt the other members of the jury to reconsider their stance as well. They'll be asking themselves if their current leanings... Leanings? Are really right or not. Now if only... If we could just identify one more clue or discrepancy that would make them stop doubting Mr. Nutsman. We might be able to tip the balance completely. Yes, that's exactly what we've got to do. Van Zeeks is looking to bring this trial to an early conclusion. That's what we have to prevent, by whatever means that we have at our disposal. Oh. Thank you, Council. On with the summation and examination, please. Yes, my lord. Okay, so now it's... 
Da -da -da -da. We're gonna pitch you against you. Those two statements clearly show a flaw in the juror's reasoning. A flaw? What are you talking about, counsel? Well, juror number two, juror number six. My, whatever do you mean, sir? I think perhaps the old man didn't hear you. Unbelievable. It's not like I was loud or anything. There's at least one fact of which we can be sure here. The bookshop receipt found on the defendant's room clearly indicates that on the day of the attack... Hey Regal, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Tuesday! Who's older, juror number six or Granny Toast? I'm older. I'm the older grandma. He had been to your books and purchased a number of secondhand titles. He then returned home on foot. But the man says he has no recollection of his turn journey. She's sweating bullets now. A very young looking Granny Toast. Heck yeah. Keep myself looking healthy and young. That's correct. But what he does remember is seeing someone appear in front of him on the way. Someone in a green overcoat who suddenly collapsed on the pavement before his eyes. Yes, we are well aware of this. The poor young woman who is stabbed, obviously. Can we really be sure of that, madam? My, whatever do you mean? I'm sure you heard juror number six account of what happened to him that day. That same afternoon, there was someone, somebody else apart from the victim who was wearing a green overcoat and who fell over on the icy streets in the neighborhood. Oh my! <clears throat> Why does he care? My goodness, you, you mean? That's right. I'm referring, of course, to the hard of hearing juror number six. Oh, are you really suggesting that the person in the green overcoat whom the defendant saw collapse in front of his eyes was a jolly old gentleman on the end of the bench here with, here with me today? That is entirely possible, yes. After all, the old man has a somewhat similar build to the victim. Well, look at that. My goodness me! Hmm, sorry, you need a pay. <laughs> and crucially, we know precisely where the old man in the green overcoat fell. On Calabash Road. Therefore, if the person who Mr. Natsume saw collapsing in front of him was in fact juror number six, it means the defendant must have taken the long route back to his lodgings. And if that's true, then clearly... The crime scene on Briar Road where the woman was stabbed was not on his way home. Oh my! You idiot, old man, if you'd have been so daft as to be rude about that, we'd have boxed us off hours ago. And really, what were you thinking wear such a befuddling coat? What did you say to me? It's a crime for the enemy to walk the streets these days, hmm? Is it a crime to slip over on the ice? Is it a crime to keep up with the latest styles and wear a beautiful green overcoat, is it? Hold it. My lord, I did hope it won't cause any inconvenience, but... You'd like to change your leaning, I presume? I do declare that I would. I should like to call for a verdict of not guilty. Thank you. And I would too. What? Is it a crime to change your mind, is it? Well... Thank you guys. Do, 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 do. Keeping this trial going. 
I feel like um, the banker dude, juror, juror number one, still has it out for me and he, he won't give me a not guilty verdict. Well, that summation examination has concluded with a rather large shift in opinion. The eyes, two. The nose, four. So the nose have it. Not guilty, they say. Which means we no longer have a consensus among the members of the jury. The trial will continue. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> we just proved which way Natsume went home. Could it seem churlish of me to drink from my hollow chalice moments after raising an objection? Jelly. Jelly, I crave my own. <laughs> hey, Salk, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. Hope you've been well, dude. Only to crush it in disgust. Pray forgive the discourtesy. Uh, Lord Van Zeeks? <laughs> It seems I must retract my earlier remark. What do you mean? I mistakenly credited these jurors with intelligence by describing them as insightful. Yet we have just witnessed them falling for a cheap trick performed by an Eastern entertainer. Huh? Whatever do you mean? I haven't tricked anyone. Everything I've said is the truth. Indeed, stalwart juror number five was undoubtedly repairing the road, as he claims. I believe you said it was a good two yards of pavement which you had excavated, sir. That's right. Took me a whole day and they paid me a measly tuppence for it. Now, my learned Nipponese friend, tell me. Do you have any notion of the distance that two yards represents? Ah, uh, um, well, if I'm honest, I don't have a clue, no. Two yards is a little less than two meters. Less than two meters? That's not much at all. In other words, a distance readily vaulted by anyone of moderate vigor. Would you not agree, my stalwart friend? Uh, me? Well, I can't say you're wrong, no. What? And did you perchance erect a sign to prevent pedestrians from passing the site of your works? Uh, I, I wouldn't dream of it. Waste of time. No coaches would have had a hope of passing anyway, and we just turn any gentlefolk back when they can't. Kids just jump right over us all the time. The accused is no gentleman as far as I can see. Rude. Erect? What? What, Rico? What? I have little doubt, however, that he could spring over a two-yard trench in his meanderings around town. Ah! Oh. No horny, Rico. <laughs> he said erect. Oh, did he? I... Let's see. Uh, oh, Van Zeeks. Yeah, he did. <laughs> You're right. Is that true? Is it? The incontrovertible truth that the books is just purchased by the accused were found at the scene. There can be no doubt that on his way back to his lodgings, Mr. Natsume walked down Briar Road. Okay, so the books were found around the woman then, and not around the old man. Crushed in a single sentence. And old man. Code man, you can talk. Pass check, thank you. You say that around five o'clock on the day in question, you slipped and fell on Calabas Road. Pray, was there a suspicious looking Nipponese behind you at the time? Oh, I, um, can't say as I remember. You, you don't remember? How about the wager, my learned friend? You say it was the old man that the accused saw. But I would lay a thousand to one against you being able to prove it. Ah! Order! Order! 
Dar, Lord Van Ziggs, explain yourself. My lord. If you have such trenchant argument up your sleeve, why in the world did you not proffer it during the summation examination? Hmm. I wanted to give this young foreign student the sightseeing experience he no doubt came for. You're a jerk. You're a douchebag, man. I wanted them to see for themselves how the opinion of the jury is so readily swayed. But you said they're- okay, whatever, you're- you make no sense. But my hospitality has its limits, and they have been reached, I feel. Oh, he took his cape off. So, my learned friend, today's sightseeing tour of London is now over. What are you talking about? <laughs> My lord. The prosecution requests permission to call its next witnesses to the stand. Finally. This game is going to make us hate him, and then by like the last cases, we're, we're gonna feel sorry for him and be like, Oh, sorry you went through all of this. This is really why you're called the Reaper of the Bailey. It wasn't your fault. You went through tough times too. And I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> Granted. Bailiff, bring forth the witnesses. It's next witnesses. Mr. Nadahudu, do you not remember? We've been told on several occasions that there were eyewitnesses to the incidents. Yes, I remember. One of them being a Scotland Yard policeman, no less. I'm afraid that's likely to be the prosecution's next witness. Why mad at anime logic? <sighs> because... Because <laughs> it's, it's just so annoying that they're like, Oh, one little tragic incident. One little sad story. And then it makes everyone feel sorry for the dude. And I'm just like, he was still really rude to us in the beginning. It's like, gosh. But anime, yeah, yeah, anime. All right, no matter who Van Zeeks brings to stand as his witnesses, and no matter what they say, I believe in Sosuke san. I know he's innocent, and I'll keep believing to the very end, until this battle is over. Whoa, hello. Witnesses, please state your names and occupations for the court. Constable Roy Beats, sir. Nothing to report on the street, sir. Patricia Beat and Rolly Beat. Patricia Beat. What's the pun? What's the pun? Other than being a beat cop. Um, what's the story here? Well, in truth, we have not been married long. I was really expecting, like, Rolly and Polly. Right? But Patricia, like, why? Rolly and Patricia. Really? Mm. In fact, we celebrated our first anniversary only the other day. No, no. It was your husband I was asking about. He seems tired. Haha, <laughs> he's tired. <laughs> Hardly surprising. Whilst being an honorable occupation, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world. Posture check, ugh. Ugh, starting slouch. Oh, really? I'm sure I've heard that before, actually. Indeed, apart from the wear of days off, our gallant officers trudge some 20 miles a day, you know. Tired from what kind of activities? Tired from ring fit adventure, Kirby. What are you thinking? <laughs> I also walked like 2.5 miles today. I started walking every day after work, at least 2.5 miles, and it is tiring. Ooh, I'm so weak. 
They patrol boarding houses and pubs, collect taxes, survey the streets, check that the meters are reading true. And they're responsible for keeping the streets clean and lighting and extinguishing our streetlights. There are a number of items on that list that don't sound much like policing duties at all. I wouldn't just be falling asleep on my feet, I'd have collapsed long ago. Officer Toast. <laughs> no, I don't want to be a police officer. But it goes without saying that the policeman's primary duty is the apprehension of criminals. Even when he's off duty, a constable is expected to investigate and resolve any crimes on his beat. For the London Bobby is a man of honor. Patricia B. Patricia B. Patricia? Risha? Patty? Mm. And a man of slumber. On the day in question, this man and his wife are walking down Briar Road in the opposite direction. And they witness the incident as it occurred. Is that not correct, Mr. and Mrs. Meat? That's right, sir. Isn't it, Rowley? Constable Rowley Beat, sir. Nothing to report on the streets, sir. What a great witness he's going to be. Very good. I'd like to hear your further testimonies now, please. You will tell the court exactly what you saw on the afternoon of the incident. Yes, sir. Hmm. It was our wedding anniversary and Rolly was taking me out for a meal. There was no time to change after work. Anyway, two silhouettes appeared out of the fog on the pavement in front of us. All of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor, and the other scattered something before Bretton off. We ran straight over, of course, and now went for help at a nearby police box. It was definitely that Japanese man in the dock. Rowley and I both saw him clear as day. Is he not going to say anything? Why is she the only one talking? Well, this is extremely compelling testimony, I must say. They look adorable. They, uh, I, I guess so, but something seems off about them. I don't know, they, they seem fishy. Or is it just me? Am I being weird? Am I being too mean? <laughs> oh dear, this policeman and his wife are claiming to have positively identified Mr. Nasme at the scene. If your testimony is true, the alternative course of events you established in the summation examination will be quashed. It's death now, in fact. They are Ace Attorney witnesses, they are always fishy, that's true. Because that alternative was never viable in the first place. What an unfortunate bechancing. I'm on your wedding officer, too. Oh, I know, but I still managed to go out with for the evening with my man. I thank the Lord for that. Gosh, the life of a London Bobby sounds hard indeed. Indeed, however, this cross-examination will be over in minutes. You may well have time to rest this afternoon. What do you mean by that? My learned friend, the witnesses saw the face of the man fleeing the scene. No, they didn't. They saw silhouettes. They are testifying under oath that it was without doubt the accused, Mr. Soseki Natsume. Why those three? And one of these witnesses is a policeman, no less. So you appreciate the gravity of the situation, I'm sure. Okay, not just those three. Except that the man's so tired, his wife has to do all the talking. You got the Eureka mount? Congratulations! How is it? Is it everything you hoped for, dream for dreamed of? Enough preamble. Counsel for the defense, commence the cross-examination, please. Yes, my lord. I need to finish getting all of the near armor sets from the raids. 
Just because they look cool. Heart pounding when facing the boss. Ugh. Like, I love playing Final Fantasy XIV, but the, like, the bosses, the raids, are just so crazy. They just do like AoE after AoE after AoE, and I'm like, please give me a chance to rest. Um, again, I'm just gonna press every single statement. No time to change after work, you say? Are you also a member of the police, uh, Mrs. B? Oh no, sadly not. It's a job for stropping young men only. Women, children, and the elderly can't even apply. I am messing up her accent so much, but whatever. Well, I think you could probably see why children and the elderly can't do the job, can't you? I think Roly looks ever so handsome in his uniform. It suits you to the down to the ground, doesn't it, darling? Hmm? What? Oh, I just finished my beat. Pat and I were heading back to the station. I was actually planning on getting changed there. Is he talking in his sleep? This is creepy. Oh no, Rolly. I'm much before you in a uniform. Sometimes I don't recognize you when I see you in plain clothes. Oh dear. That doesn't seem healthy. Carla here to the point. You're going for a meal after you had finished your beat for the day, correct? That's right, sir, yes. Although I was fit to drop, to be honest. After spending the whole day on my feet. A policeman is my life, sir. As long as I'm proud of the owner of this, I'll serve my city and my queen to the end. What's that now? My warrant card, sir. Proof that I'm a London copper. It has noble founding principles of the force written on it. As a reminder to all of us policemen of our sworn duty. In the BA dungeon, you can't revive normally. In order to revive, you have to have a balance that has a 70% chance to work. And if it doesn't, then someone has to sacrifice themselves for you. That sounds crazy. No thank you. To patrol the streets of London Town and uphold the peace of the common man. Sir, and for such a noble cause, I cover 20 miles every single day without fail and without a grumble. Because I know that the product of my boots is all Londoners need to hear to feel safe and secure. So, fighting crime doesn't appear to come into it then. But sir, just on that one particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Mrs. Beat put up puts up with a lot being married to a bobby like me, I want to show my dear wife how much I care. Okay, this is actually pretty cute. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rowley. Patrolly! Patrol Beats! That's why her name's Patricia. Ah. Uh... Oh, what a charming couple. Their young love is such a joy to behold. If a little over the top, perhaps. And then, kinda describe what happened next. Two, so let's peer out of nowhere on the fog and pave in front of us. Two silhouettes. That's right, they were coming towards us, walking up Briar Road in the opposite direction. It was a rather plump figure followed by a scrawny, thin looking man. That does sound exactly like the victim as pictured in his print, and like Mr. Natsume. Yes, unfortunately, it does. And you're certain that at that time there was nobody else nearby? Oh yes, quite certain. It was dark, but there are streetlights on Briar Road, you see? There's nobody else around at all. Is that right, my darling? Why does she keep dragging on the scarf? That seems kind of mean. Hmm, what? Oh, yes, that's right. Of course, there was a light fog on the ground. But Brian Road is dead straight, and you can see a fairly long way down the pavement. And then there's the street lighting as well. I didn't see any other pedestrians. 
Before sleep takes a firm hold, your answer please, Mr. Beat. Are you quite sure of what you said? The boss has a special move called Black Hole. If you are dead while well, uses that move, then you get yeeted out of the boss fight and outside the dungeon. That's overkill. That's crazy. Yes, sir. As a couple who spends all day, every day keeping watch on the streets, I'd swear to it, sir. I'm as sure as my love for Patricia is true. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rolly. Hmm. They're still maintaining there was no one else around that other than the victim and the attacker. It's starting to seem like that must be how it really happens. I forgot to mention it's not a dungeon you can queue for, so you have to like do certain events to like lead up to it, or what? It's beginning, it's beginning to seem like there's nowhere to run. Well, that didn't stop Mr. Natsume, did it? He fled the scene all too convincingly. But, okay. So if they saw him and he ran, he would have ran towards them. But they said he ran away, so I don't I don't think it was him. Thank you. I believe we have a reasonably clear idea of the situation just before the incident now. What happened in the crucial moments that followed? Oh, so I want to just collapse on the floor and you're scared of something before running off. Hmm, scatter something. What do you mean by that? Oh well, I couldn't quite make out what it was at the time. But then when we got closer, we realized what it was. Didn't we, darling? Hmm, what? Ah oh, yes, that's right. It was an old box. I see, old box. The culprit had dropped a number of items, a number of them, all around where the victim lay on the pavement. Indeed, as clearly pictured in this photographic print. Why aren't they telling us the titles of the books? Wouldn't that clearly be like... <sighs> Tell us the titles! That rotten Japanese man to... What? Yeah, what he did the deed. That's so racist! Let's not forget that it remains to be established that the defendant was indeed the attacker. What we saw him? It was a man and dog without question, sir. The mustache, the hunched up back, the cat-like eyes, the top mouth, the snub nose, everything. This poor man, I know, just like... Sorry he seems a bit nervous, but like he's not shifty or, you know, weird. Oh, my hair tie is not here. Gosh darn. It's getting real hot. Ugh. Any more insults you want to throw in? That's right. He looked down at that poor defenseless woman with those terrifying intense eyes. And then suddenly threw his box onto the pavement and ran away. I see. Pretty much you gotta gather 64 people in the area, usually in a discord. They, they go into the area before the dungeon, wait for this fate to show up. That gives them the ability to go into a portal that teleports them into a dungeon. They have to find the portals and go in. Yeah, no thank you. Too much work. This is tough. They seem as though they're telling the truth here. May I remind the court that the unambiguous testimony comes from a policeman and his wife. Now, please, continue. Yes, sir. We are straight over across the uh, nearby police box. Was it your husband who went to fetch help? No, no, I went. I may not be a police officer myself, but I am the proud wife of one, after all. Isn't that right, my darling? Hm, what? Ah, oh, yes, that's right. I asked Mrs. Beat to go. I was off duty by that point. But Bobby's never truly off duty, of course, so I felt obliged to stay and guard the scene. 
Very laudable, Mr. Beat. Preserving the scene of a crime is a task of considerable importance. That's why I sent Patricia, you see. I told her where to find the right police box. Um, forgive my ignorance, but what do you mean exactly by the right police box? Depends on a crime's location, you see, as to who deals with it. Where the woman was stabbed wasn't actually on my beat. So I told Patricia to wait to the police box for the beat that the incident fell under so he she could go and report it. I ran there as quickly as I could and asked for help from the Bobby on duty. There's nothing more potent than a young couple in love working together, you know? And thanks to your swift response, the case was quickly resolved. The actions of two model citizens. Oh, please. You're making us blush, isn't he, darling? Yes, sir. What Patricia said, sir. Let's move on, shall we? Man, there's nothing in their testimony that really stands out to be, like, wrong, so... wow. Okay, both saw- okay, this might be weird, because it's like, you said you saw only silhouettes. So how can you know it was him? But surely you wouldn't have been able to see his face by the light of the gas street lamps, would you? We absolutely could! Us Londoners have exceptional eyesight, I'll have you know! Right. The light from the street lamps was more than enough. And my husband only told you that the fog was only light, didn't he? <sighs> yes, and what of the fog? We're famous for it across the globe, I believe. But it's an absolute menace to those of us who have to live with it, of course. Oh, it is, it is. When it's thick, you can't even see the hand at the end of your own arm. Yes, all right, I take your point. Now, could you stop shaking your husband about? The constant fog makes our eyes very sharp, you see. That's how we can tell you for sure and certain that was that little Japanese man we saw. Can't we, darling? <sighs> I didn't want to marry any of these women. They are aggressive. Yeah, she seems a little, like... It's like, mm, I don't doubt your love for your husband, but you also seem very forceful. And it's just like, uh, no, thank you. Hmm, oh, ah, uh, yes, it was a cute and no mistake. The mustache, the hunchback, the cat-like eyes, the talk mouth, the stab nose. <sighs> Unmistakable, sir. As far as this couple's testimony is concerned, there can't be any question. It was Sosaki-san they saw running away from the scene of the crime. So that's it, is it? That's their entire testimony? What do you think, Mr. Narahodo? Well, I hate to admit it, but on hearing the testimony... It really does seem as though Mr. and Mrs. B saw what they saw. Well, saw what they say they saw. Mr. Nasume running away from the scene on Briar Road that day. Yes, I feel the same. So if that's true, where does it leave us? The members of the jury are sure to call for a guilty verdict after this testimony. Oh no, then what do we do? If Kasuma saw we're here... What are you trying to say? I think he would try to find a contradiction somewhere else within their testimony. What do you mean, somewhere else? Their statement about seeing Mr. Matsume is unequivocal. Calling that into question won't help. But if you could identify some other part of their testimony which appears to contradict the facts, you might be able to discredit them to make the jury doubt their pair's memory of the day is accurate. Oh, right. Put simply, we must focus on finding a discrepancy in the, these statements somewhere. I don't- I don't think I could find anything, though. If you don't, I'm afraid the trial may reach an early and unfavorable conclusion. 
Ugh, why do I always seem to be so up against it? Um, Mr. Lawyer, sir, can I ask you something? Oh, yes, of course. What is it? Well, you keep asking us all these questions about everything we've told you, so... It seems like you don't believe our testimony. Is that right? Is it? Well, out with it! What? No, no, no. Oh, no, it's really not that at all. My husband's a policeman, remember? And I know what I saw. Didn't they say the victim looked into the eyes of the killer? Oh, did they? I'll, I'll have to look into their testimony again. I remember every last detail. Everything. Like, like... Oh, I know. What about the books the man dropped? I could tell you the names of every single one I could. Every single one. And you dare question how reliable my testimony is. Okay, then name them. That will do, Mrs. B. No, it won't do at all. That Japanese lawyer has no idea what I'm capable of. Even if I decide to forgive him for insulting us, don't think for a minute that really will. I really didn't mean to cause offense. Please put your husband's fist down. P perhaps you'd like the opportunity to supp supplement your testimony, Mrs. Beats. Might that appease you? Oh, thank you, my lord. That was settled things nicely. Wouldn't it, darling? At the name of the book, the four bucks he dropped at the scene. Tell me the names. Tell me the names because he only had three. Yes, we know that there were books dropped at the scene of the crime, as you say. Those purchased by the accused at the nearby second-hand bookshop on the day in question. After I've been to the police box for help, I. Well, I decided to have a good look over the area for good measure. I am a proud policeman's wife, after all. I did for Rowley. And what was your husband doing at the time? Oh, he was lying face down in the snow, getting some well-deserved rest. He works ever so hard, you know. Ever so hard. That's what she said. Don't you, my darling? Frames? Frames what? What frames? Glasses frames? Picture frames? Interesting way of guarding the scene at the crime. Well, Mrs. Beat, seeing as you've regaled the court with tales of your powers of recollection, would you be so kind as to recount the titles of the books you observed at the scene? I'd be happy to. Now, are you all listening? There was the picture of Monsieur Somebody or other, and what's its yearnings? No! Stream disconnected? Why? No! Can you all see me? That's what she's repeating for me. Oh my gosh. No. No. Stream down. Why? Oh my gosh, no. It's down. Uh. <sighs> now we'll never know what she said. Why is it down? Why is it down? Um. Uh, shoot. Uh, refreshing the page. Like back up. Hooray! That's what she loaded. Pfft. I'm so sorry about. I don't. Why the heck did the stream go down? My stream help was super healthy. What the heck? My internet speed is so stable. That's so weird. 
Okay. But uh, what does she say? Um, the picture of Monsieur Somebody or Other. What's its yearnings? Um, meal for someone. The last one was definitely the thing of me's something. Okay. If we look at the receipt, picture of Monsieur Leclerc, Mir for Gaborough, Canterbury yearnings. Ah, damn it! Natsume was there because those are three of his um, books. But he only. This person had four, he only had three. You see? I didn't do it. <laughs> That's what they all say, smooth. Yes, I see there are one or two holes in your memory. Oh, well, they were along those lines, I'm quite sure. Stream is tired of this lady's BS, so am I. There were indeed books found at the scene with titles along those lines, as you put it. Well, what did I tell you? So I think it's very me the way you've been implying that my testimony can't be trusted. Did you agree, darling? Oh my gosh! Anyone who accepts my Patricia will have me to answer to! Terrifying. Yes, she really is. So that's it, is it? That's their entire testimony? What do you think, Mr. Nadahoro? Well, I hate to admit it, but I'm hearing the testimony. It really does seem as though Mr. and Mrs. Beat saw what they say they saw. Isn't this the same- yeah, this is the same exact conversation as before. And then Mrs. Beat interrupted us. Mr. Jury, blah blah blah, oh no, what do we do? We have to find a place where discrepancy, blah 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 blah. Put simply, but uh, I'm afraid trial may reach us. Why do I lose a bit of a guess? Um, I don't know what time to change after work to so civilettes. Scatter something before we run off. Here by police box. Sound clear as day. The four books. I'm going to. Okay, I'm going to try presenting this. He only had three. So you're saying that there are four books? That's right, I remember all of them. The picture of Monsieur Somebody, what's its yearnings, a meal for someone, and the thing of me something. I'm sorry, Mrs. B. But there is a fundamental flaw in that statement of yours. Oh no, what, what flaw? Simply that at the scene of the crime, there are only three books, not four. What? This is a receipt from the bookshop where the defendant bought his books. Your books? Yes, and it details Mr. Natsuma's purchases that day. But as you can see, only three books are listed. Only three? But no, no, that can't be. I remember seeing them. Books, I tell you, four dirty old books. Oh, really? Have a good look at this photographic print of the scene of the crime. As you can clearly see from the evidence as well, there are only three books. But I just don't believe it. I saw them there, I swear it, I saw them. No, madam, I'm afraid your powers of observation cannot be relied upon. So it cannot be denied that though you say it was the defendant you saw, you could very well be mistaken. Oh no! Oh no, no, no! No! There was a fourth book, it's just not in the picture! <laughs> it's plainly evidence. But it is your powers of deduction that cannot be relied upon, my learned Nipponese friends. What? What cannot 
be denied is that these two witnesses saw the accused running from the scene. A fact that you very know, you know very well, you have no hope of disproving. Ah. So you've started to avert attention from that by dint of... Huh? Dint? Of some inconsequential discrepancies. Would that be fair? Ugh. He, says it, he sees right through me. But your plan has somewhat recoiled against you. What are you talking about? It's quite simple. Let me explain with a toast. With a me? Hey! <laughs> To the policeman's wife and her entirely accurate testimony, in every respect. Oh. You see, the matter is not up for debate. At the scene of Briar Road, a total of four books were most definitely found. But, but what about the photographic prints? It only shows three books. She's lying on top of one! Oh, oh, oh. Quite right, only three can be seen in that print. That print? You, you mean to say... Allow me to present another. One that shows the victim's hand. You couldn't show us this photo! The lion's pride. That's some... that's some... The, the army dude! His favorite book! I don't believe it. It's... it's the fourth book. As you will observe. Looks like he nommed... nommed that book. <laughs> the fourth book was hidden from view in the original print by the victim's torso. No! No! So, okay, wait, The Lion's Pride is the army man's favorite book, but why would it be out there? They photographed it, but when we went into his house to investigate him, or ask him about Natsume, the book was on his shelf. Was it not? Order! Order! There, you see? You see? Look at that. Look, look, look! Yes. It's just like I said, isn't it, my darling? Yes, sir. Patricia's always right, sir. Let us study the receipt for the books purchased by the accused on the day in question. Mrs. Beat, the titles once again, if you please. Oh, yes, of course. The picture of Monsieur somebody or other. The picture of Monsieur Lecoq. What's its yearnings? Canterbury earnings. A meal for someone. A meal for Gaborio, in fact. As the court has just heard, the witness remembers the book titles flawlessly, save for a few minor details. Mrs. Beat's powers of recollection can only be described as exceptional. Did you hear that, Rowling? The gentleman paid me a compliment. Yes, sir! Flawless, sir! Patricia is flawless! But... There are only three books on the receipt, and Mrs. Beat mentioned four. There's nothing surprising about that. Clearly the fourth book that is... is that which is shown in this photographic print. No, seriously, it looks like someone ate the book, or like it was burned or something. If that book is from the army man's house, that means when the wife and the husband were having a fight, someone threw it out the window because their their bookcase was burned. So, um, if that if the back of that book cover was burned, then it's one of their books. So they might have thrown the knife out along with it which accidentally stabbed the woman. Right? Was he having an affair? Maybe, maybe the military man really was having an affair 
and he called himself James to like throw the other lady off. Oh my gosh! I told you someone om nom nom that but is that? Um, I don't think that photo's in our yeah that photo's not in our um, court record yet. But if the back is burned, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! And it's a total accident that this happened, and Natsume just happened to be there. Oh my gosh! That's that's my new theory now for this case. I'm sorry, Council, but that does that does not not seem odd. Why should the fourth book be omitted from the receipts? It's not odd at all, my lord. It is burnt. It's it's like. But then why would why would you? Because like that person has a grip on it. But if it was just randomly flung out the window because that's the time they had their fight. I don't know! As the photograph clearly shows, the fourth book was found in the victim's clutches. You can do it. Piece it together. Oh my gosh! I want to know the truth now! In other words, it belongs to the victim. The victim was holding her own book? I wonder, what became of that fourth book? Obviously, it wasn't overlooked by the investigating officers at Scotland Yard. You didn't before? I didn't know about this book! I didn't know! Pet this cat, please. <laughs> pet, pet. I have it here as evidence. Bring it in! Court record, now! You will submit that- Oh, that- <laughs> You will submit that on the aforementioned photographic print to the court, please, counsel. My pleasure, my lord. Okay, okay, okay. Let me examine this, let me examine it! Yeah, 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 okay, okay, yeah. I don't care what you have to say, I don't care. Shut your face! The prosecution rests! I'll rest my hand upon your face. It's totally numbed. Oh, hey! What's this now? Oh, look at this! The book has been badly burnt! You're right. You'd never be able to read it in this state, especially not the latter pages. What a terrible waste. Judging from the scorched edges of the paper, I think the damage must have occurred very recently. Hmm, a book recently damaged by fire. Why does that seem to raise a red flag with me? Ah! Ah! She bent down to pick it up and got stabbed. You're oh, but she bent down to pick it. That's why she would have it in her clutches. But then, how would the knife? If if a knife was one of the items that got thrown out, but the tip is the tip is broken. It's a large, commonplace folding knife. It's found in the victim's back. Um, ah, ah. What does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? The prosecution lasts. I have nothing further to add. What? You seem surprised, my learned friend. But your resistance until now has been in vain. Entertaining, yes, but futile. The spurious longer route to the accused lodgings that you tried to establish in your summation examination. And the attempted discrediting of the witness's powers of recollection in your cross-examination. Futile? I walked right into this, didn't I? You see? Everything we said is true. Isn't that right, my darling? Yes, Pat. Marry me, Pat. So perhaps the ladies and gentlemen of the jury would like to reconsider their positions. Should the court waste any more time on this Nibonese travesty? You're so racist. Or is the decision you have to make all too apparent already? Rip stream? Is stream down again? Are you for real? You have heard all the witnesses and seen all the evidence. It's fine for me? Okay, thank goodness. This trial has run its course. Mr. Narahodo, I'm afraid we're in a terribly precautious precarious position. Jell looking chill as usual. Poofy toast. 
Yeah, my hair is starting to dry and so it's getting so hot. I wish I had my hair tie here, but I don't. No, but... If I fight back with the wrong way now, I could very well just make matters worse. Think, Dutosuke, think. What do you do now? Raise an objection. Right? I raise an objection now? I'm not done yet. No, my learned friend. It's over. That last cross-examination was your final chance to establish a credit, cre credible defense, and you failed. Well, you didn't show me all the freaking evidence until now. Like, you should have given me the burnt book and the second picture in the beginning of the freaking trial. You douchebag. The die has been cast. There is no more room for debate. Well, it might be over as far as you're concerned, but... But... I can't think of what to say. If I may, Lord Van Zeeks. It seems somewhat boorish to close down the debate at this point. <laughs> Your insignificant little Eastern Isle must be a lawless hole indeed. For a lowly judicial assistant to have the audacity to intervene at a moment like this. How dare you, sir? I am, to my shame, still a very inexperienced lawyer. So you will have to forgive me, but I consider my assistant's advice essential and her opinions invaluable. Mr. Naruhuro. Hmm. You sound fragile, but the game sounds very staticky. No! Why? Curse you, stream. Why must you do this to me? Ugh. Game's fine to me. Oh my gosh, what's happening? Technology, why? One of the law's great guiding principles is tolerance, so the court will hear you, madam. Game audio staticky. I don't know how to fix that, guys. I'm sorry. Maybe if I turn the game off and on again. Let me... Video capture device. Mute and come back. How's that? Did that fix anything? Go ahead, Mr. Sato. Please. Just all F4. Regal, that'll close down everything, you silly Billy. <laughs> well, hopefully my video recording that goes up on YouTube will be A-OK -okay, perfectly fine, but it's still staticky. Yeah, I, I'm so sorry, guys. I, I don't know why Twitch just went weird on me, but hmm. Hopefully the checkpoint will come soon, so... And then we can stop. Ugh. Very well. Pray, what insight can you give us? Uh, all day others have had the same thing. Okay, so it's a Twitch problem, not just me. Yay, it's not just me. What have we all overlooked in this matter that you see fit to pursue further? Well, the court has been presented with new evidence, but only after the last cross-examination cross finished. I see. I only watch JT on Twitch. Oh, Regal, thank you for your support. You're so kind. And you believe that this new evidence warrants further examination, do you? Yes. Um, Mr. Naruto, what do you think? It's just possible that this new evidence might be the decisive proof we've been waiting for. And hot tub streamers? Oh my gosh, how long do they stream for? 30 minutes? <laughs> Until they get prudy? <laughs> The judge is sure to ask the members of the jury to announce their learnings in a moment. Leanings in a moment. And of course, he's sure to ask you to explain what the crucial piece of evidence is and why. I know what it is! So we must take this opportunity to examine the newly presented evidence as thoroughly as possible. Yes, I understand. And thank you, Mr. Sato. This is it. Susan has managed to win us one last chance here. I can't let it go to waste. The defense wishes to present evidence, my lord. Hmm. Very well. The defense may present one further piece of evidence. Evidence that apparently offers a profound insight into the case and has hitherto been overlooked. The back! The back is burnt! The evidence in question is what we can see from the newly presented photographic prints of the crime scene. 
The fourth book found in the victim's hands. We have already we have already discussed the fourth book at length. Other than it being in the victim's grasp at the time of the incident, no significance had been attached to it. Pursuing the matter further would be a flagrant waste of the court's time, as you know. Ah! Hmm. Yes, I'm afraid, counsel. I must concur with the prosecution on this matter. When I afforded you this opportunity, you led the court to believe that the evidence in question contained a hitherto undiscovered clue. The back is burnt! That's the clue! So I must insist that you elaborate, counsel. You will identify this clue at once. Do I make myself clear? Oh, um, yes, my lord. It's, um, Mr. Nanagoro. I believe the prosecution is trying to avoid a thorough examination of the evidence. Which means we may very well be on the right track. Jelly tub. Ew, a tub full of jelly? Gross. I, yes, I think you may be right. So, counsel. Precisely where is the vital clue to this case in which this fourth book conceals? I don't know, could it be this? I would ask the court to observe the back of the book in question. The back? What do you- Good gracious! I don't know about hot tub streamers, that was a joke. <laughs> no, that's fine. I don't think you'd, it would be safe to stream around a hot tub. Lots of, like, electrical stuff around water. Not safe. It's the bird to a crisp! So we have to ask ourselves, why was the victim clutching what is clearly an unreadable book? It is undeniably an extremely unnatural thing for her to have been doing. <laughs> unnatural, you say? And what of it, my Nipponius friends? Oh. It came flying out a window! What I do concede the point, it bears no relation to the case, there is nothing to discuss. So should you wish to assert that this fire damages some veiled clue as to what happened that day? Pray, do enlighten us all. What truth does this charred book hide? A charred book. There's just one possibility here, which I can't quite bring myself to rule out. It's an outside chance, certainly. But worth a try. Alright, I'll explain my theory. Don't keep us all waiting any longer then, Council. Explain this theory of yours. What are you suggesting that you can ascertain from the fire damage this story term has suffered? It's owner! My lord, the burn on the back of the book reveals a startling truth. Also, I was Temi Chang. Oh, Temi streams? That's cool. What does she stream? I wanna like I would like to watch a stream at first just because of Undertale. The victim killed themselves. Ah! No, I think the victim was killed on accident. About the book's owner. I beg your pardon. But you already know who the book belongs to. She streams Dark Souls? Oh man. <laughs> Remember when I tried to do Dark Souls? I realized why I couldn't kill that shield dude. It's because he's way over leveled for me. I found that there's another path to go to, but I just haven't um found it. The victim was gripping it in her hand and she felt it flow. After all, it's obviously hers. The question of how this book came to be in the victim's hand has yet to be answered. Dark Souls is fun. I suck at Dark Souls. I only tried one stream of it, and it was so miserable because it kept dying so easily. It was so bad. However... As to the questions of who the book really belongs to, and where it originated... Only Dark Souls I like is Hollow Knight. <laughs> the defense has very credible answers. Good gracious, how can you possibly... Very well, I'll play along with this futile attempt to delay your inevitable demise. But do remember, the members of the jury may well burn you if your little gamble goes awry. Counsel, the defense's response here is very likely to influence the final outcome of the trial. So tell the court, who do you claim is the owner of this burnt book? 
You! The answer is that the book belongs to the couple who owns the house where the defendant has his lodgings. A certain Mr. and Mrs. Garadab. The landlord. The landlords. Demon Souls remake is like one of the two reasons why I might get a PS5. I bought the old PS3 version for like 10 bucks, so I will stick to that. <laughs> and whether this is some extraordinary coincidence or some kind of fate at work, I don't know, but... Of all the people in London, one of the six chosen for the jury in duty in this courtroom today is none other than Mrs. Garadab herself. Oh, oh my goodness, me? I, I think you must be mistaken, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm not Mr. Garadab's wife. I'm his maid. Things would be so much easier if you would just drop the pretense. All right then, how about a simple question for you? Have you ever seen this book in Mr. Garadab's house? Oi, I would have presumed to know all the books he keeps, sir. This is outlandish behavior. This woman is the accused landlady, you say. You implicate this hardworking member of the public. You besmirch her without a shred of evidence. Your actions are unforgivable. This is not mere conjecture. The defense happens to know that on the day in question, at almost exactly the same time as the victim was stabbed on the pavement below, another incident was taking place in the room on the top floor of Mr. and Mrs. Garadov's house. Good lord! What sort of incident, counsel? Maybe toast? Ah! A fire, my lord. Great to see you, sir. I hoping to break of law, you know. Jelly in a maid outfit? No, thank you. <laughs> the whole place was filled with smoke. Can't see a bad thing. Didn't take long for a fire spray, of course. The bad fans just start going up as well. That'd be a little awkward. <laughs> First of it is, I lost my favorite, the book uh, called Lion's Pride. The Lion's Pride. By Jove, the very same title that the, uh, that's the subject of this debate. Oh dear me. <laughs> this is risable. All you've told the court is that a book by the same name was involved in the fire. In which case, it would be reasonable to assume that it was burnt to ashes. And entirely unreasonable to infer that it magically removed itself to the scene of the crime. It's right across the street. Someone could have flung it! Hello? Perhaps it would make more sense if I told you that the cause of the fire was marital discord. Without going into details, it appears that Mrs. Garadab was considerably enraged. Apparently, she continued to attack Mr. Garadab even amid the flames. Oh, how awful! I can't even imagine being so horrid to the one you love. Can you, Rowley? Absolutely not, sir. My Patricia would never raise a finger against me, sir. <sighs> I have my favorite old novels in that case. As soon as the fire got home, then that was it. Well, smoke and smoke. Then the wife started hurling things at me. Then was I back up against the window, under heavy enemy fire, incendiary books coming ten to a dozen. The man had his back up against the window, and he was a burning book thrown at him. Goodness gracious, oh, are you suggesting? that the book was thrown through a window and, and landed coincidentally at the scene of the crime. No, a thorough investigation of the surrounding area was conducted the very evening of the incident. And there is no report of the Gerdam's window pane being broken. That's quite true. We also saw no sign of broken glass when we visited the Gerdam household. But it's not conceivable that the window was open at the timing. Not even remotely. 
Let us not forget the season and the chilling weather that accompanies it. No Londoner would ever leave a window open in the middle of winter. Ah. Hmm. Does the defense postulate that this scenario in all seriousness, Council? That's a great eye roll. Jelly eye roll. Ooh, jelly rolls. Mmm. Ah, oh, bread. Ah, oh, milk tea. Ah. Oh. Do you earnestly claim that the book found at the scene was a flaming projectile thrown by Mr. Garadov's wife? Yes! The window was open! I believe it's a possibility, my lord. This point off! Well, I hope that everyone can see you for what you are, you little foreign trickster. Ooh. You call yourself a lawyer, but you're just a coward! A me coward! Huh? Really? Claiming that our little chips at the whole neighborhood are like, honestly! Implying that I'm merely posing as a maid for appearance's sake, how could you? It's nothing to do with this basic case, not any of it! All you've done is sunny our family's name! No, I, I assure you, that was never my intention. Dragging up an upstanding citizen's name through the mud simply to divert attention from your failing defense. I should box your ears, that's what I should do. It's utterly unforgivable. Too right. Here we go. How long have we sat here now listening to this Nipponese spouting out his fancy foreign theories? But think about it. At the end of the day, the only person who could possibly have stopped the victim is that little hunchback with the mustache, and he ran away from the scene too. I I do declare you're right. It's true. Yes. What do I tell you? Makes sense to me. Who? Oh, sorry. What's that? Well. It would appear that the ladies and gentlemen of the jury are once again in full agreement. What is your position, Lord Van Zix? In truth, my lord. I feel these have un been unnecessarily protracted proceedings. But then one must always exercise patience in order to savor the best vintage. No way! The mystery of the fourth book still hasn't been... Whoa, hello! If books are your predilection, my learned friends, study them on your own time. What? No forgive the discourtesy this time? <clears throat> In that case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will now state your individual decisions regarding the defendant's culpability for the court to hear. Thank you for that unambiguous response. That's twice now. It's over. Mr. Naruhodo, don't give up. Ms. Susato, have you forgotten? The battle isn't over yet. How is it not over? You're not suggesting. Of course, the defense has the right to another summation examination at this point. You can still look at Mr. Jones to change their minds. You have full chance. My lord, the defense asked to exercise its right to a summation examination. Huh. You believe you still have tricks up your sleeve. I don't intend- I don't attract to trick anybody. I intend to uncover the truth. This is no time to be downcast. As long as there's a chance I have to stay strong and determined. I'm so tired. checkpoint but oh my gosh oh it's so crazy uh saving progress yes uh. 
Oh my gosh. So there was a reason why we were like interviewing and investigating the Garrett dubs before the trial. Cause, cause even Scholes was like, yo, there might be no point. This might have no like correlation to the, to the um, actual crime. But it turns out there is like there, there was a reason why the girl in the green coat bent over to pick up the book. And then, but, but where did the knife come from? And there were two characters that showed up at the end of the investigation before we started this trial. I was like, who the hell are you guys? Uh, uh. I missed the last minute of stream because I went to the restroom. What happens? I'm doing another summation examination, which means I get to press the jurors again and be like, well, don't you think you, you're a little too hasty or did this in your decision? Oh gosh. But oh my gosh, two and a half hours of streaming already. Holy crap. Um, I'm going to end this here. Whoa, who's bending over? <laughs> Nobody. Um, but yeah, I'm going to end this here and I will pick this up on Thursday. And hopefully on Thursday, we will finish this trial because I just, I just need it to end. Regal, thank you for something for 21 months. Woo -hoo! Kirby, thanks for the hugs. Wee! But yeah, that's it for me tonight. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.